So what's up people, welcome to another video for Pamela. So I've been playing this game for a while and I thought that I would go over yet another overview rather than a uh, play-by-play commentary. And for this episode, I wanted to go over the subject of ranged weapons. Now I've been collecting a lot of ranged weapons. I have all three that are available in the game now and I have them all maxed out. So I figured that I would spend some time kind of looking at all three weapons and then give a video commentary and my kind of biased review regarding all of these three weapons. So as mentioned, there are three different ranged weapons currently available in the game, and they are the Subversor, the Arc Welder, and the Javelin. Now the Subversor, which is the most common of the ranged weapons, is a dark gun, and it can provide either poison, sleep, or rage darts with poison being the default and sleep and rage being available as you upgrade the weapon. The arc welder is an electric gun and can provide a single jolt of electricity to a single enemy or can send out electric balls for uh, crowd control and area effects. The javelin is a crossbow and it can provide a single shot to once again that single enemy or a multiple arrow shot that can affect uh, multiple enemies coming after you. So each one of these weapons has its advantage and disadvantages and though I haven't gotten a complete understanding of all three weapons I have used each one of these and so at this time I thought I would give a video on at least the things that I know about each one of these weapons. So for those of you who have been watching my video commentaries, you know that recently I have been using the Arc Welder and the Subversor a lot. And the nice thing is, is they can be used together in tandem because the Arc Welder takes up the dorsal position, whereas the Subversor takes up the forearm position. And the Javelin also takes up the dorsal position, so you can use the Javelin also in tandem with the Subversor. Now, I do have to tell you that that does handicap you in the sense that you can't use any of the melee weapons available. However, there are some advantages to being able to use two ranged weapons. And in my case, I found that uh, having the uh, long capabilities of some of these range weapons and the short distance capabilities of others works quite well and I found that I probably enjoy that better than using a uh, melee weapon in tandem with one of the ranged weapons. So as mentioned I currently have the arc welder and the subversor equipped and so we could take a look at each one of these weapons and then later on swap the arc welder with the javelin. Okay, so first up we have the subversor, which as mentioned is a dark gun. And of the three, the big advantage of this one is it's the fastest shooting of the guns. As you can see here, it just shoots. And the biggest disadvantage is it's also the easiest to overheat. So after about three shots, you're going to have a problem shooting with this gun. Now, as much as it's the fastest shooting weapon, it's not the fastest flight time weapon. And that's the arc welder, as you can see here. You do have to uh, spool it up to actually get the most effective power, as you see here. It spools up relatively quickly, but the nice thing is, since it's electricity, once it shoots out, it hits the enemy relatively quickly, whereas the dart does take a little bit of time for it to uh, hit the enemy after you shoot it. So it does turn into a choice of whether you want to fire fast or whether you want to hit the uh, enemy fast after you fire. So for a long distance, I found that the arc welder works very well because it hits the enemy the moment you shoot it. And so you don't have to worry about the enemy moving between the time you shoot and the time the uh, target gets hit. Whereas with the dark gun, it is a little bit trickier for doing long distance shots. But for short distance, the dark gun is really quick because of the fact that you could shoot right away. Whereas the uh, arc welder, you do have to wait a little bit of time to spool up. And as fast as it is, if the enemy is really close by, every millisecond uh, counts. And so... I tend to use the Subversor for short range attacks 
and the arc welder for long range attacks and it actually works out quite well that way. Now for both weapons there is an alternative capability and for the arc welder it's this ball of electricity and as you can see it creates this area uh, where anybody passing through it will get electric shock and will be stunned and for the most part they won't be able to move. Not always. Some of the higher level enemies such as the Reaper can walk straight through it but overall they will be slowed down so it turns out to be a really good defensive capability as well as a slightly offensive capability as well. I mean it does damage or give damage to the enemy and so it can turn out to be quite useful in that um, purpose. Now the subversor doesn't really have an alt fire. What it does is it the alt button swaps between rage, poison, and sleep. Now what's interesting is poison will be the default and you'll use that most of the time, but sleep and rage may come in handy. Now sleep is really more calm than sleep. It doesn't really put your uh, target to sleep, but it does calm them down so that you could kind of stand around and hang out with them and they won't kind of rage on you. Rage, of course, on the other hand, will get them to come after you even faster. Now initially you, I was a little bit disappointed with Rage because it wouldn't really attack any of the enemies, uh, ne neighboring enemies the way for example Rage did in Skyrim. Uh, what it did is actually came, they came after you even harder. Uh, I think that's changed now. I noticed that the uh, afflicted now fight against each other if the rage, their rage levels go high. So I think what the rage dart does is raise their rage level high enough that they start berserking and kind of beating upon each other. Although I haven't really uh, checked this out uh, completely, uh, I think that may be what it does. But overall, uh, what the alt button does is swap between these three darts. Now as for the javelin, it actually is the longest spool of time uh, compared to the all three. So it does take a little bit of time to have it shoot full force. However, uh, you can shoot it at medium uh, or mid-level energies. And although you don't get as much of uh, damage, you can shoot relatively quickly. Now it's alt fire is interesting. It shoots multiple arrows uh, relatively quickly. Now I thought that this was phenomenal because I thought each arrow might be the equivalent of uh, one of the arrows that you shoot in a single shot. It's not really that way because of the fact that uh, since you're shooting fast you don't get the spool up time. But the nice thing is is that you can shoot multiple enemies because you have multiple arrows going out. And the final advantage of the javelin is it doesn't overheat, at least especially in single shot mode. And that can turn out to be useful because even the arc welder does overheat after a while. And then you have to wait for it to cool down. Whereas, especially in single shot mode, I could literally go on forever uh, shooting with the javelin. And it actually turns out to be quite good that way. So although it does take a long time to spool up, you do have indefinite ammo, especially because of the fact that I'm using a maxed out cyano reprocessor, in which case it just continuously provides ammunition that way. Now each one of these weapons also will provide a status effect that's unique to that weapon and for the subversor it's cloud. So whether it's sleep, rage, or poison, it creates a cloud of uh, toxin that will affect neighboring enemies as well. Not as strong as of course the one that gets hit, but it will create a little bit of a crowd effect. Now for the arc welder, the status effect is stun. And for anybody who gets hit by either the um, primary fire or even the area effect alt fire, will not only get electric damage, but they will get stunned. And this can be really effective, I mean really helpful, especially from a defensive point of view. It gives you the ability to either run away or set yourself up for the next attack. And for the javelin, the status effect is knockback. Now you can sometimes get a stun, but you definitely will get a knockback. And if it's strong enough, it'll just take the... Uh, 
zombie down or the afflicted down. Now, it, as you can see, it doesn't last as long as the stun. But at the same time, it does take them uh, down and get their balance down a lot of times. And so you often can get a little bit of a defensive effect. Uh, more so than the Subversor, not as much as the Arc Welder. And then there are the headshots. Oh, those wonderful headshots. And if you max any of these weapons, you could literally one-shot many of the uh, zombies uh, with that. And especially with the case of the uh, Javelin, I've noticed that you could even one-shot um, enemies all the way up to maybe something like the Widow. You can't, nothing can one-shot the Reaper. But uh, yeah, even the Widow will go down if you have the javelin. Now I don't know if any of the others are that strong but definitely all the way up to mean lady or nasty dude uh, you could definitely one shot with uh, either the subversor or the arc welder. So yeah if you're good at headshots any of these ranged weapons works really well. Now two final points with regards to the arc welder its uh, alt fire is really useful, but its recoil is so strong that every once in a while it sends the ball of uh, electricity in some really weird direction. And you do have to correct relatively quickly. The one saving grace is that it does fire fast, so it's not really a significant problem, but you do have to keep that in mind. Now what's probably more problematic is that for the javelin, the flight speed is really slow, so you really have a hard time hitting uh, moving targets. Now you would think that because it's alt fire uh, fires so many arrows, that maybe that would accommodate for it. But the spread of the arrows is so far and so wide that when the target is far away, <laughs> you literally have a really hard time hitting them. And so for moving targets and for far away targets, the javelin becomes a very tricky piece of equipment to work with. And so in the end, uh, despite some of the cons of all three of these weapons, the advantages that they can give are significant. And uh, no matter which weapon that you get, it's probably really crucial to get one of these ranged weapons as quickly as possible. Now, of course, a lot of this depends upon luck, but uh, always keep an eye out for those weapons. And once you get a weapon, I have found that uh, upgrading that weapon as quickly as possible is seriously important. Uh, it makes hunting uh, zombies a lot easier and if you have a good ranged weapon then it actually helps because of the fact that you could kill zombies faster which improves their drop rate and that improves the things like getting food, getting water, getting uh, other equipment and so overall it's good money well spent. Okay well in any case that's my little review for these ranged weapons. I hope you find it a little bit useful. And uh, thank you very much for watching the video. If you have any comments and your experiences with regards to um, Pamela and the weapons, um, please post them in the comment section below. And uh, we'll continue to make more Pamela videos in the future. I hope you join us. And until the next video, we wish you all the best. And as always, Jaya Nice Day, everyone.